So in an effort to get this motor back to original specs and figure out this throttle, I went ahead and picked up the service manual for the 79 Johnson that I have. I also picked up a new socket so I can take off this uh, flywheel. So we're gonna see if we can get the flywheel off and get all the throttle linkages off and gears and see if we can figure out if it's uh, not timed right in the gears or if something else is wrong. So let me get the flywheel off and then get to reading this book and see if I can figure out what's going wrong. Brass hammer. Okay, so to start getting this throttle linkage off, there's a flat head right here that I'm gonna take off. And then there's a couple like cotter pins here. I'm not sure everything that needs to come off. I think the starter's gotta come back off. So I'm gonna start with taking this off, the starter off and that, and then we'll see where that gets us. So let me see if I can set you up so you can see, and then we'll go get those off. So this is actually at a really good place right now to kind of explain what's going wrong. So you can see this roller here is attached directly to the carburetor. But if you notice, it's not touching anything. So this is supposed to be right here. You can see that, that timing mark there. You see that? That is idle right there. So that, that keeps the carburetor at the perfect idle. But for some reason, when I twist the throttle all the way, it's going way back. So I have to keep the throttle at like right there to keep it idling. And that's not right. And I'm, I'm not even sure it makes it all the way to full throttle because right there it says, as far as I can twist it in neutral, um, it does go farther when it's in gear. But again, it looks like it's got full range of motion, but something's wrong. So, let's see if we can figure out what's going wrong here. Okay, just zip tied that out of the way just enough to keep it kind of together so the spring doesn't pop out. That should be okay.
Okay, I removed this thing that connects the starter and it didn't really undo anything. There's two nuts holding this on here, which would allow me to take it off this way, but I'm still stuck down here on this gear that's holding it in. I don't think I'd be able to rotate it out. I'm gonna try, but I might have to take this whole piece out that connects to here. So I'm gonna give that a shot, take these two out and see if it rotates out somehow. If that doesn't work, I'll try taking this out and seeing if I can just lift it straight up. I haven't, I think I can disconnect it here too. I don't know if that I have any cotter pins that small though. All right, I gotta do some looking, some more thinking. I'll bring you back when I figured it out. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to lift that out until this gear's out of the way. Okay. Okay, so to remove this gear, I need to take this cover off first. So I'll just use a flat head here. Broke it. Broke it. Okay. Going to the parts store which is eBay, by the way. I got this off once before. Oh well. Let's get these gears off. Okay, took a pin out. Well, I was messing with it and I popped the gear out of the end here, but it hasn't actually gotten me anywhere. The plastic bit's still stuck solid. So let me, let me read some more from the book, figure out what I'm doing wrong, if there's a snap ring or something I'm missing. Okay guys, I don't think I'm gonna be able to show you, but I'll try. Right there, oh, you might be able to see it, is a snap ring. So let me get that off. And of course, there's no actual angle I can pull it off on. Oh, of course. Still don't know how this side comes off. Okay, I'm gonna take it off here and see if now with all that play I can get this off. Something fell. Another keeper. Washer with a spring. I'm gonna keep those next to the cotter pin. Then I think this handle can come off. That had a bushing in it. So again, putting that next to where I'm pulling them out. Let's see if I can get this out now. All right. Vertical control shaft is now out. All right, let's see if I can just see if they're timed right. Okay, the two gears are definitely aligned. We 
we've got a dot and an arrow coming together. Okay, let me show you my confusion here. So I've got this and it looked like it was timed right to me. I'll show you in a second. But so here, here it is at idle. And look how much play I have between this and the adjustment screw. Even if I adjust the screw 100% in, I'm not anywhere close to this. And that is, that is at idle right now. So something here, somehow this needs to be turned so it's this way, but still at idle. And I need to do some more looking to figure out what the heck's going wrong. Let me show you why I say it's timed right. Okay, one second. Okay. So you see when I rotate these, how this dot and this arrow line up? That to me tells me that this is timed right, according to the book. So the book here says, Raised arrowhead right there, aligned with the dot. So those are two are meshed together. And then that's figure 617. So lubricate and install vertical control shaft gear aligning dot on vertical control shaft gear with raised arrow on inner control shaft gear. I still haven't gotten these out. So I'm gonna see if I can get them out and just see if I can rotate them a little bit and if that might help any. I'm tired of fighting this handle, so I'm just gonna take it off. There's a nut right here. And then on the underneath side, you can see a nut back in there. So you use a big um, extension to get to it. And then you hold the other nut on the outside. So I'm gonna get that off real quick. Okay, I just got a pin out of it. So let's see if now I can remove it. Oh yeah. So it just slides right out after you get that pin out. Okay. How do you think that grease is? Okay, so I'm gonna attempt to put it back together as the directions say. Okay, next steps are to insert the, the, the piece I forgot. So this little washer bushing, I think it's a bushing. So insert the bushing and put that back in. Okay, and then you've gotta put your, your washer spring washer, washer, and then cotter pin. So that'll just hold it all seated in place. And then cotter pin. So I've got these two to install onto this. We're gonna install back in this piece, which has two alignments there. So I don't think I can mess this one up. We'll see. Okay. I already messed it up. All right, come back. Goes on there. So that was just, I was just putting the spring and the washer back on 
and then now this has three so you can't you can't swap the sides on this on accident so three here three there Okay, and let me get that retaining snap ring back on. Okay guys, I finally got that pin installed. It just took some work with a little, I don't know what it's called, but straight pick kind of thing to just get it aligned. It just took a little while to align it. So that's installed. Now I have to make sure it aligns correctly. Once I get this handle installed, do you see how, how it aligns there? So make sure it meshes right. And then I'll get the handle installed. Okay, I believe this is the charge pack and the ignition coil, the power pack. I, I think I read that right. I just briefly looked, but anyway, I'm gonna look and make sure that's all timed correctly and in the right spots. Because if that's out of whack, then that might also be throwing this carburetor adjustment out to a weird spot and then the throttle's out. So I'm, I'm gonna just keep going down the list. I don't know if it's possible to do that wrong, but I'll check it. So I'll get back to this tomorrow. See you guys then.